Hey guys, it's Carnifex from the Nerd This Video. Today we are going to go over the new event that just got dropped. Um, a couple people knew about this a little while ago, um, but for the most part, everyone found out uh, at 12 a.m. UTC. So, uh, in case you haven't seen yet, General Murdoch has been confirmed. So, I was right about one thing, but as we will talk about, I was not right about the other thing. Um, although I could have been more far off. So, um, basically looking at it real quick, you can see right here that it's seven heroes are requirement, right? And you're not going to unlock him until you get all the way, right? He's a 330 shard requirement, um, in order to unlock. But these standards are exactly the same as it is for Solius. So, uh, as the people who did tier seven of Solius and, um, uh, an Ember, Ember's event was significantly easier. Um, the 90L can basically just most stuff over, but particularly because the orcs have no way of preventing taunt in the first turn, other than just getting lucky with Tromgar stuns, and then he's probably, someone else has probably done Anyway, all that to say, uh, hypothetically, the recommendations are the same. This may not be any harder. It also might be harder. We'll have to see. Either way, I feel like there's a solid chance that this event is no harder than the Solius event because, frankly, demons are just a better faction. So demons are what is required, and he's even read that already, right? And, and part of this video is going to be going over the demons as kind of like a faction overview. But first, I did not click that. First, we're going to go find our boy... General Murdoch, though, because hey, even on the test account, right? I don't have any of these goblins built. Most people don't have goblins built. People are wondering, holy crap, like, oh, I gotta gear up demons, and then I gotta gear up goblins. Like, at least they're not requiring goblins. That's great, but like, oh, is it even worth it? I don't know. Well, I'm here to say I think it's totally worth it because not only are four out of the five demons significantly to very good, um, but also um, they... General Murdoch, you don't need to use him with goblins to get a lot of value out of him. He is very plug and play for raids. And he's a lot of great tags. He's tactician, traveler, um, like that, that's really significant for some of these tournaments or some of these events where they have those specific requirements. Um, so he's got a lot of great tags. So as you can see, whenever you cap him out, right, he inflicts damage decrease. Complete, like, Halves that damage output from bosses. That's great. Right? Not literally halves because there's more math than that, but it ha halves the output, right, prior to it being mitigated. Um, whenever you max it out here, right, if the target already has slow, so right, if you pair him with someone like Freezard or Mega Wheel, more likely Mega Wheel, right, unless um, they're not ma more like um, Master Duo uh, because uh, Freezard. It's kind of like he's he's more for hard work teams, whereas I can. But hard work right takes uh, less damage against physical attacks, which is what we uh, get with General Murdoch. He's a physical damage dealer, so he's better suited towards a Mega Wheel or Solius for the physical damage reasons, and so he's better paired with uh, Master Duo uh, in the raid. So anyway, it could be really soon because now we have Master Duo applying the slow, even though General Murdoch can apply to it slow himself, but he can't until a little later. Um, Get this trap in, decreases the turn meter by 50%, right? And if they're afflicted by damage decrease and a random ally is summoned to help. So you can use this in the first turn, turn, right? Throw the damage decrease down. Then damage decrease will be down and you'll have someone random come in and help attack. It's a really great kit. And his freezing trap, which inflicts slow, could be used on the third turn to help. Make sure you apply the slow. Deal AOE damage to all the adds. It's just a good overall kit. Now, as we go into here, right, his traps are more effective against members of the Order and 60% more effective against Elves. What's cool is that both Solius and Mega Wheel are actually members of the Order. So he's going to get 30% damage, bonus damage against those people unless they do something to affect that. So he is really good, even plug and play. In the raid. We haven't gotten to his leadership yet. I'm going to go over it briefly, but all I say is do not feel like you're committing yourself to a big goblins build if you get General Murdoch, because honestly, I, I think for a while you can just kind of worry about General Murdoch and kind of more slow farm 
uh, your goblins, particularly ones like Amara, which are really hard to unlock. They're hard mode only. They're a little later on. Um, Sergeant Pigwald, right? So now this is a really good leadership. This is the leadership that potentially transforms the goblins, potentially makes them viable at PvP. Like in PvP, they're just going to be either they just kill you first before mechanics matter or they don't. Um, but for right now, for those of you who are like, man, I just don't, is it even worth it to have to build goblins? You don't, or you don't have to build goblins. The only goblin you have to build is General Murdoch, and you're going to get a great character in T7 raids. So now let's talk about demons. I haven't done like a faction guide yet, so this is kind of going to serve as one. Um, obviously if you have Shadar, you should use him. I'm not sure, who, you would probably take out Punch Your Face. There's actually a chance you might take out Mega Wheel and kind of run the same thing as Goblins, where you just kind of run tankless because everyone else is so much better than the tank. Um, not sure, won't know until the event comes around, right? I don't know what kind of enemies we're looking at, what their stats are going to be. Um, so we're just going to go down the line here. So we're going to start with Xantara. So other than Mega Wheel, they're all great and they're not terrible farms uh, for gear. Um, now, some of them are a little harder. Uh, a couple of them are a little harder with where you can get their shards, and Xantara is one of them. One available early on-ish. You know, it kind of depends on how hard you're working on it. But she, overall, she's a great... This is a great node. Like, honest, this is a really great node. You get shackles. You get the boots. You get um, the the little... What are they? What are the, crap? the diadem of flame, uh, which I know a lot of people... That's, a, that's one of those challenge gears that you're like, oh, man, I can't wait till the challenge comes so I have some more of that. And Northwest Rune Hard Mode for damage runes. So really great. There, you, I run this still every day on my main account. Um, just because this is so significant along with some of those gear pieces. And uh, Rage of Clans. I think Demons one is actually a little easier to reach. Just because people tend to build out their order teams a little more. Because they have, they're more sustainable. Clans can be a little harder to get someone put together in. So um, that's why I kind of said even though... They're probably equivalent, like, gear and stuff requirements. I find that one a little easier because you use everyone. Uh, as for her abilities, uh, this is good. As to whether or not you're going to need to max it out or not, I have no clue. But what's nice about this ability is, honestly, these first few are kind of the weaker upgrades. It's once you get to here where you get the bonus of the healing because initially they're only healing for 50% of the damage. So if you go 145 at 50, now you jump it. Not only has she increased her damage output by almost 50%, but she has doubled the amount of her damage that gets healed for. So, really big jump in damage. And it heals a person with the lowest health. So, if the tank's the only one taking damage, great. If you have one DPS that kind of got nicked a little bit before a taunt could get out, you're able to still do damage while healing them. It's really good. Uh, the, stat, the, the levels on this are pretty good. They scale pretty decently. Um, the 100% is great. She does sacrifice some of her health, but if she's the lowest health person, this ability is going to help her come up. And this one, which does some pretty good damage, right, 330%, um, she's going to be able to heal herself up a lot. And super easy to get her ability level 3 to where she's restoring one of her own uh, two abilities, one of her two specials, right, every turn. And then also you take her all the way, and now she's restoring that for an ally. That's potentially Kyra getting to throw the Invis and Terminator out more frequently, getting her AoE out more frequently. Venome getting to boost Kyra or put out more AoEs with poison. Like, really good kit. Not a terrible gearing. She does have three bells between gear eight and gear nine. That's the most frustrating part of it. Um, the you know, not technically bells, curse madness, right? I just call them the bells. Um, so moving on, Kyra. I mean, so many people have used Kyra and Venomate in order to push all the way through their clans campaigns. Again, as to what you will need, need right? I can't test that. I don't have the ability to test that. But I can tell you investing all the way in her primary is a great idea um, because getting to 50% ability block is great. For those of you using her in arena right now, ability blocking the enemy Kyra if they use it is so huge. If they don't have Kyra, blocking Freeze or blocking Cruel, blocking a Trom Guard, you can make your match so much easier if you do one of those. So it's a real it's a great move. You can use it in every facet of the game. So you've got uh, days chance coming which is again good for reducing other teams right if your kyra is able to to get out days because you like um 
You ability block their Kyra, and then she finally uses her turn meter boost. They're not going to go up. If they got days, Tromgar isn't going to counter you. Does a 10% of her physical damage more damage than her basic. So not a lot more, but it is an AoE. Um, she has a really functional kit. She does her basic right off the bat, and then she goes into her um, this uh, invisibility slash turn meter boost, and then goes right into her AoE, which, as we'll see with her passive in a little bit, then gets boosted damage from her being invisible. So um, the main thing, I mean, this is a no-brainer. Definitely 100% do this, because what this is going to do is going to throw count invisibility and counter-attack uh, counter on enemies. So we, as we'll get to Mega Bill in a little bit, he has a delayed taunt. You can't use it turn one. And so you're actually better off using Kyra at the beginning to give it, and also with the counter-attack, so we'll get into Mega Bill's kit, it helps him actually put out um, a lot more damage than he would have Um so, and basically just boosting up gets you more turn meter, and that's never bad. Um, you can argue at some point diminishing returns, but... Now, this is another one that boosting all the way is really significant. Again, you get a third of the value of this from this final increase, so... C'est la vie. Uh, and she also gives these boosts to Venomate. So, what's really nice about this is if you have your Venomate faster than your Kyra, and it's something you're going to want to do, the reason why for that is because what will basically be able to happen is she will use up... She will use her... Um, uh, oh wait, does he actually need to be, I'm, I'm skipping ahead real quick. No, actually you don't even need that. You don't even need that. So you can have your fight Kyra faster than your Venomate. Sorry, I got that backwards for a sec. Um, she's going to apply invisibility and boost a turn meter. And then Venomate comes around, right? He's going to drop this AOE, throw tons of poison. You got to go all the way on this or you really lose the efficiency of the, the cooldowns, being able to really maximize Kyra's damage, then this allows all of those stacks of poison to boost up uh, Venomate and Kyra, and then Kyra's already boosted. But, I mean, she just cranks out so much more damage with this AoE that'll follow up right after. So the two of them work together really well with their kits. Um, so moving on, right? So in the first turn, you're going to use his basic. If you take it all the way, you've got a 80% uh, chance to apply a poison rate to so another stack that will help Kyra do more damage on her AoE. Um, but also there's a 50% chance for Kyra to come around. So you might be able to nuke like one of those weaker characters that comes out that you uh, before the tank taunts. Um, this AoE does really solid damage. And again, it's if you have your Kyra faster... Again, I had that backwards initially. Sorry about that. If you have your Kyra faster then this is going to put out increased damage from her passive that also works for Venomate. Now he's thrown in all this poison, and now Kyra has her invisibility bonus from herself and the poison boost from all these poisons that are out, potentially six poisons that are out. Then, at the end of that, you can have a couple turns later, right? You can have him boost up Kyra um, so that she can either throw out the invisibility and turn meter boost again, or if just how the speed works out, it's time for AoE, she's going to do a ton more damage because you have increased crit chance and crit damage. Super stud, complementary kit, the two of them, you cannot go wrong with bringing them to at least gear 9 before this event, and if you want to go gear 10, you're, it's really not bad. He is a bit squishy, but he's not bad. Here's the one thing that makes me say... you. Honestly, even gear 10, don't feel bad about it, even if he comes unnecessary for the rate of the um, the unlock event, is because they're both bounty hunters. Bounty hunters are super significant because they're used for, uh, I'm pretty sure it's, uh, yeah, it's speed runes and the gold events. So you're going to need, because those those events for the final tier are, are pretty difficult, actually. And so this is going to help you be able to clear those Get the three rune, uh, get the, the three rune drops per attempt, so up to nine speed runes, and or sorry, up to eighteen speed runes. Right, so it's six attempts instead of six, kind of from places. Um, uh, and they're going to help you get more gold from that uh, reoccurring gold event that comes around. So you really can't go wrong with investing those those guys at least to gear ten and giving those abilities as indicated. Right now, I would say these are kind of at what I would say are reasonable minimum requirements. Like, you can't go wrong by boosting them at least to this point. That's where I have these characters all set right now, if you want to look at that for abilities. Um, it's it's just these are not bad investments. These are totally not bad investments up until this point for all these characters. 
Now we get into Puncher Face. So Puncher Face, he did kind of get that teeny nerf, right? Just because for the raid, he's not going to be as useful anymore. But what's great is that there's almost certainly going to be really reasonable tenacity percentages, not 78%, right, for this event. So what that means, you aren't going to need to give him a potency set. You aren't going to need, you can run him damage, crit chance. He's going to be able to crank out damage like he used to and still apply the taunt on his AoE. So his whole thing is Gotta go fast, gotta go fast, gotta go fast. 60% chance to recover 20% turn meter on his basic. Um, by the time that you get this max, he's a 50% chance to give himself haste, which boosts his speed by 30% um, every three turns, right? So he's going to have that. It lasts for two turns. He's basically going to have haste, assuming that, you know, assuming you got it every time, right? But he's going to have haste basically half the fight, which is crazy. This AoE, right, this is what makes a puncher face who he is. Um, not only is he wicked fast, but whenever he throws down, everybody's taunting, so you're able to navigate around those taunts. So you can put out some good AoE damage early on whenever the tank might have taunted, and then by the time you got Punch Face come around, because he's so dang quick because it's passive and all the haste and turn meter gain that he's getting, um, he's going to be able to throw that down, and now you're going to be able to nail people with basics. Um, and then this, this just boosts the speed, right? I feel like the first couple are gimmies, like... How is that not valuable? Um, but, you know, we'll see how much more becomes about Now, here's a groan, right? Uh, this was an accident, by the way. I meant to keep him at three. Uh, I just was on, I have my test count on the iPad and just kind of on my, on my laptop and it kind of like double tapped on accident. So uh, count this as like three, just because three is such a cheap boost. And because you are going to be getting a decent amount of counterattacks from him. So, um, as you can see, even at the end, right, he doesn't ever get a reduction on it, but he's not going to be able to use this until his second turn. So since you want to build him as much, you kind of want to build him as slow as possible, really, because once his, he is able to taunt, you're going to be able to really seamlessly chain together Kyra, kind of like f forcing the taunt on him with her invisibility and everyone else and him actually using his taunt. Um, so you only care about the beginning, so you want to build him totally potency that we talked about everyone else, right? So like Xantara, I think I may have left one or two items, so I'm going to blink back real quick. Xantara, you want to run her damage with uh, crit damage and speed primary. The other one isn't a huge deal. You can use crit chance or health with her. Uh, Kyra, uh, you might want to use speed. You might want to do damage. I feel like you're more likely to want to do damage. Um, right now in the arena meta, she's more speed, but I think you will probably want to do damage. Uh, speed, crit damage, and potency primaries, and probably a damage and crit chance set, but that, again, that could change once we see the event itself. Uh, Venomate, you want to go damage and either health or crit chance, depending on what we need uh, for his survivability. Um, and then you want to go speed, crit damage, potency primaries. Uh, Puncher face, you want to go speed, crit damage, and uh, the primary isn't as important poly as the speed secondaries on the Northwest room. As I already said, damage and crit chance. Now, Mega Wheel, one thing that's great about Mega Wheel is he, he has really high, we're talking like top five in the game for HP and protection. Tromgar is the only other tank that can say that. But this dude sucks to gear. I mean, terrible amount of shackles. He is rough. Um, this is going to be the limiting factor for a lot of people. And he's the one that initially I would say just work on getting him to like gear nine and then just kind of stash and see if he has enough survivability to get what you need done in order to get General Murdoch. Um, as for abilities, I think going three, again, that was a misclick, going three there. So here's the key. He applies a stack of pain. And this is crucial for his AoE. And it lasts for five turns. So it lasts for a really long time. Um, you're probably going to taunt, you, you, you're probably going to end up taunting his second turn, even with Kyra going, just because they're going to move so much faster than uh, Mega Wheel, because you, you don't actually want to speed primary on him, I think, for this event. Just for this event, I think you actually want to go all, like, shield and health uh, primaries on him in sets. Um, and so... Uh, He's going to have his cheat death, right? He's going to be able to remove debuff. He can get a little bit of, like, health there. But honestly, Zantara is going to keep him up just fine, which is why I think you might actually lean more towards health than shield for those primaries. Um, so here's, here's, like, the thing, right? For each stack of pain, it deals an extra 30% physical damage. So hypothetically, right, 
This is something he has on his second turn. Part of the reason I say you want to use it on second turn is because he'll be slower, right? And you want to have that because the invisibility might wear off until that your third turn. Uh, by the time your third turn comes around, so if you use this on your actual third turn, there's a decent chance that there's going to be one to two stacks of pain on everybody. Um, so, like with that being said, now that he's going to be able to get an extra sixty percent damage, the reason to be increasing damage is about fifty percent. Uh, if you get it max, which I don't think is necessary, it will be a little more. But uh, getting him to level four is probably not a bad. It's not a bad idea. Um, may or may not be necessary. You're more welcome to hold out. And this, he's not a tank. He's not going to do a lot of damage. It's not bad to make him do more. So again, I feel like these these first couple right abilities are so cheap. Why not? If you have everything else with more high priority than other peeps, because at this point he's going to get a 15% crit chance increase, and you know that'll mean he's doing 50% more damage on that AOE, which could be really good. So overall, he's he's the crutch right now, and he's one of the two hardest farms. So um, if you guys didn't see it already, I'm going to bring it up real quick. Um, Meta though put out a farming guide, so this is not uh, an an event guide, right? He doesn't have the data for that yet. Um, and I'm sure it'll be initially locked behind Patreon, but honestly, super, super great. He, he's able to get into the metadata and get a bunch of info way before anyone else if you want to have a better idea of getting stuff done. Um, but I'm going to put a link in the description here uh, for this. Um, he is broken down kind of where you get people. Hey, assuming this amount of currency, assuming this amount of drag coins for refreshes of energy and node refreshes. Frankly, it, it, essentially at this point, if, you, if you've been playing for even a month, you can 100% have Kyra, Punch Your Face, and Venomate ready for this. 100%, there's no one who can't. Unless you've really just messed up on who you've been investing in. The hard two are going to be Mega Wheel and Xantara. So, as it stands, essentially, if you have both of their heroics unlocked, which I know that Mega Wheel in particular is a bit further down, I mean, you can go and check, right? You were talking about... Um, Santara being a little far, he's a full round later in uh, in clans, and he's the next hard mode. Uh, he's he's in the next chain of hard modes for um, demons. So this is not is not easy. It's not easy for sure. Um, so he is he is the hard farm. This is the hard farm. Santara is not easy, but her thing is more of the time it takes than the difficulty of unlocking the node. But if you have both of those unlocked, and you can commit to one refresh. So all it takes, right, is three energy and 50 coins per person. You can get 800 energy just from playing. So you haven't even used up all your energy you're getting every day. And you're dropping uh, 50 coins each, so 100 coins. Between the coins you get for the dailies, all these various like tournaments, events, even if you don't place very high, arena, you can get a solid amount of, you can get enough drag coins to make that happen. Uh, basically, if you have him, them even at five star right now, right, because it's in 30 days, it's probably going to last seven days, 37, even if you run a little low in your RNG, you're going to be able to get them in time if you have them at least to five stars. For other peeps, you know, might, might not get them this first time around. Maybe you'll have Shadar by then. Maybe you don't even need Mega Wheel. And all of us who kind of had to waste stuff on him this first time around, you know, get to watch you put it on Shadar and not waste it on him. But uh, anywho, I think to General Murdoch is totally worth going for. Uh, I know it's a little like low on Ember, right? And she, she's shown to be okay. I've seen some really great hard orc T7 scores with her. I just don't feel like... I didn't feel like the net increase from her justified all the investment because you needed to put a lot into her first three abilities. You needed to uh, get her basic to five or six. You need to get her AOE maxed. You need to get her uh, her stun maxed. If you didn't do that, you didn't even really have her. And while you do want to do a lot of the same things to General Murdoch, I feel like what you get out of him is you get a much better character for the two harder bosses, right? Um, because uh, hard work's the easiest one. Dragon's the easiest one. Um, those two are definitely the easiest, and Mega Wheel and Sorcerer where people struggle, so General Murdoch's great for that. Part of the problem is that he does have a really low base potency, and so you will need to run him with a lot of potency, probably two sets and a primary. Um, oh, I did want to say, real quick on Mega Wheel, give him a potency primary just to make sure he's sticking those pains. That's it. Um, but General Murdoch, to me, is, uh, because of how good these four characters are, particularly these two, 
And Zantara is, I mean, Zantara is the best healer not named Solius. That's just, that's just big facts. She's the best healer not named Solius. At the moment, Renara, you know, different story. But, uh, in my opinion, if you can go for it, I think it's worth going for it. Make sure you get Solius to seven stars. You have a whole month uh, to farm your gear and everything for these demons. So, um, anywho, this is me, and this is my opinion on stuff. Go ahead and hit me any questions you got in the in the uh, the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.